The NRL ladder might need a week off after what it endured this week. The Storm have clinched the minor premiership. The Panthers are now in fourth position. The Cowboys had a week off and clinched a final spot. And there are five teams fighting for the final spot in the eight. I can't wait to see what happens in round 26. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Bergs here for our weekly tipping and predictions video here on The Casual Athlete. And what a round we just had in round 25. So much movement in the ladder. Oh, my God. The Tigers getting a win on Thursday night. Who saw that coming? And the Raiders beating the Panthers as well. Some huge upsets. And we're going to talk about all of that in just a moment. But if you haven't already, guys, please like and subscribe to the channel. We're very close to getting towards that 12,000 subscribers mark. So if you hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our new content. You won't miss any of our videos leading into the finals, guys, and we are going to be having some really special guests up for the finals predictions and possibly our last round as well. Might see if we can get Longy on for that one. And as we always do, guys, let's just take a quick snapshot of how we did in round 25 and went with the Seagulls on Thursday night. And i got to say... I really expected them to get a win here. The Tigers, they won two in a row and they shocked me. I should have maybe taken a little bit of um, a look into Manly's record at Leichhardt. It's terrible. They had not beaten the Tigers at Leichhardt in 17 years and that stayed exactly the same on the weekend. Um, Manly just really ill-disciplined. Had a lot of guys go to the sin bin and, and the Tigers were too good for them in the end. Scored 30 points in the process as well. Good on the Tigers for getting two in a row. The Dogs got a win over in New Zealand, but it was not without controversy. Stephen Crichton getting a suspension instead of getting sin binned on the weekend. It's possibly going to cost them a little bit more, to tell you the truth. I know a lot of people were complaining about it at the time. And yes, it's Sean Johnson's last game. It would have made a little bit of a difference, but... To me, the Dogs were very strong once again. They limited their opposition to under 20 points once again. And I've got to say, they, for me, I'm not sure if they want to go into these finals on a massive winning streak. I think we saw that with the Knights last year, going into the finals, not losing a game. I think it really, while it fills you with a lot of confidence thinking you're just going to go in and win every game, it's possibly good to get a little reminder of you know, maybe we're not that good and, you know, then we can really fortify our defense and, and be really sure of ourselves. But that could have a negative effect on this dog side at the moment. They are all confidence and they are charging into these finals. The Broncos, I had them winning 13 plus in this one, but they gave up a 16 point lead and had to run the Eels down. But I wasn't really concerned that they would get there. To tell you the truth, the Eels have been really leaking points, especially in the second half of games. So, yeah, good on the Broncos for getting a win. And, Kevy came out and said that they're going to be there in the finals this year. I've got my doubts on that one, and that might give away who I'm tipping in at their game this week. As we said, the Panthers just oh, really threw it away against the Raiders. I thought the Raiders' goal line defense in this game was outstanding. Pretty a poor play on Luai's part, but you know we'll move on. Uh, hopefully they get a win at home this week. The Storm getting a win down at Amy Park in Nelson Osofa Solomona's 200th game. I thought that they would only just win it, but they ended up dominating the game, to tell you the truth. The Dolphins absolutely nowhere in that game, and they've really faded off at this time of the season. The Knights got a win, and I thought it was going to be a lot closer than it ended up being. Um, Kalen Ponga was phenomenal in this one, finally stepped up and showed that attacking prowess that he is really well known for, and uh, they dominated the Rabbitohs in the second half. For the Roosters, getting a win 13 plus, don't know if I need to speak about this one, but I might talk about them a little bit later. I do have a bit of a worry with the Roosters, so stay tuned, Roosters fans, for that one. And the Dragons, man, I should have listened to myself. They like to go win-loss, win-loss. This was one of their losing weeks, but I backed them to break the trend. I should have stuck to the trend. The trend was there, and I ignored it. Um, no doubt they'll probably pick up a win against the Eels this week. Alrighty, guys, let's just have a quick look at the tipping comp that we are running with NRLtipping.com this year. And North Sydney Bears in front by one point in first position. Jay Fitz in second place on margin ahead of Callum the Dark Knight. The Usher Man Steve is trying to get there, but it is seemingly a three-horse race at the moment. Keep putting in your tips, guys. We go all the way to the grand final this year, and the winner will be announced. There will be prizes for second and third as well. So keep tuning into my videos each and every week. I will update you. 
Let's get on to round 26 tips, guys. Only a couple of weeks to go before we hit the big finals. The first game of round 26 is up at Queensland Country Bank Stadium where my Cowboys will be taking on the Melbourne Storm. Now, in the last 10 games between these two teams, the Storm have won eight out of those last 10 games, but the Cowboys are on a two-game winning streak against the Storm. They beat them last year and in 2022. So this will be the only matchup that they have for 2024. Let's see if the Cowboys can make it three in a row. They should be getting Jason Talmalolo and Jeremiah Nanai back, and that is good for the bench rotation and their middle forwards as well. I do feel like the Storm last week, they put in a very good performance. It was one of the more complete performances that I've seen from them this year. They locked up the minor premiership in the process, and this is a five-day turnaround for them. So you know what I think will happen? I think the Melbourne Storm will be resting a few players this week. Yes, that's right. I do believe that the Storm won't risk players getting injured on the back of a five-day turnaround. I expect to see Ryan Pappenhausen rested. I expect to see Harry Grant rested, Jarome Hughes possibly. Maybe not Munster because he's only just come back into the side. They might want to see if they can get Xavier Coates up and running, but they might also not want to risk him considering it's only a couple of weeks out from finals and you know he might want to play next week. I expect the Cowboys to get a win here. I feel like with the week off, came at a really good time for us. Uh, I think we needed to you know, just kind of reset a little bit and kind of establish a bit of a positioning here in this eight. We've got six position now, and I think that is huge in the context of we're going to be playing the Manly Seagulls. We are 100% going to be playing Manly. That is locked in for week one of the finals. Whether it's going to be at Brookvale or Queensland Country Bank Stadium is entirely up to us now. We need to win these last two games. Funny that both of us play the Dogs in the last couple of weeks of the finals, so we'll see if Manly can beat them this week. But I'm praying that the Storm rests some players this week and we get a bit of an easier matchup. If they don't, then I think it's a bit of a stupid thing for the Storm to do. But I, I really feel like we won't beat the Storm up in Queensland. They love it there. But I'm hinging on the fact that Bellamy will want to rest some players to get a bit of time off this week, considering they've already secured that minor premiership. Let's go the Cowboys here. 1-12. to Come on. Lock in a home final for me. And speaking of the Manly Seagulls, they will be taking on the Dogs at a core stadium this week. Now, Manly have only lost to the Dogs once since 2017, so the Dogs, no doubt, will be looking to overturn that fixture. For Manly, they were really disappointing on Thursday night. I think everyone would have tipped them. Uh, if you tip the Tigers, congratulations. Uh, don't know whether it was the smart option, but you got it on pure luck anyway so that's good on you I, I, I will I'll give you your props on that one but Manly did have a few blokes sent to the sin bin one was Ola Kawatu, who I have in super coach and to be fair I didn't agree with his sin bin at the time and I do believe he should not be suspended at all for the dogs they will be without their fearless leader Stephen Crichton he was meant to be sin binned in the game against the Warriors for a shoulder to the head and He's copped a one-game suspension, two if he's going to fight it. So we'll see if he takes the early plea. I think if he was smart, he probably will. So that kind of throws out a little bit of their you know, leadership. Uh, I think he's so solid in defense, especially on the edges as well. Again, was quite good on the weekend. I just feel like Manly haven't got enough points in them, especially against a dog side that is the best defensive team in the comp. <sighs> It's really tough because they also lost Kurt Mann, the Dogs, and he's been brilliant for them this year. And Manly off losses this year have been pretty good. Um, I just don't know if if Tom Trebojevic goes off again. I feel like Manly will get over in this one, but the Dogs also haven't lost a game at home all year. So with that being said, I'm going to go with the Dogs here. I think they get a close, tight win. 1-12, to despite Stephen Crichton being out for this game. If they lose, then we all know who to blame. Stephen, you should have aimed a bit lower. We're starting off round 26 with fixtures that have been dominated by one team in the matchup, and the Panthers versus the Rabbitohs is no exception to this. The Panthers have won eight out of their last 10 games against the Rabbitohs, and that is a welcomed opponent considering their loss at the hands of the Raiders last week. 
Back-to-back losses for Penrith, so they're on the hot seat to lose potentially three in a row, which has not happened in the league since 2019. So hopefully they get it together this week and can beat the Rabbitohs at home. For the Rabbitohs, they didn't have Cody Walker last week, but he should be back for this game. And considering how clunky some of their halves play was last week, Jack Whiten, I thought, was pretty good, but he had to step up in that game. They were pretty good in the first half as well, just really fell away towards the end. And the Knights finally cracked out a decent attacking display. I feel like the Panthers, at the moment, they're in a position that they haven't been in in the last four seasons. They sit in fourth position and are staring down the barrel of not having a home final week one of the finals. And for them, especially in the year when it is their last year at Penrith Stadium for a little bit, I think that they want to get that second position, but it's really tough for them to get back there now. They're going to have to punish a few teams in the next couple of weeks, maybe even more than the Sharks and the Roosters will. It's about whether you want the Roosters or Melbourne as your first week matchup. And for the Panthers, I feel like they back themselves against any team, but away from home, it's definitely going to be a lot more difficult. But in this one, I'm going to go the Panthers to beat the Rabbitohs 13+. plus. Super Saturday starts with the Eels taking on the Dragons at Combank Stadium, and I got a little bit of a bone to pick for the people who organize the draw each and every year. The Dragons haven't played the Eels at one of their home stadiums since 2019. What's the go there? They've always had to go, especially since 2020, the Dragons have always had to go away to play the Eels, no matter what the fixture has been. And all the games have been either at Combank Stadium or Bank West. Can someone answer me that question, why that is? They'll be playing at Combank Stadium again this week. And for the Dragons, as we know, they had a loss last week. So that probably means that they're going to beat the Eels this week. Yep, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to take the Dragons 1-12 to here. Just feel like the Eels aren't really putting in the effort in a lot of areas right now. They started strong against the Broncos, but they are serial faders right now. I think that could happen in this game as well. But I feel like the Dragons will have enough in the tank. And judging by the trend, which I'm not steering away from this week, they should lose to the Dragons this week. Unfortunately for Para, it will be about the Spoon Bowl out at Campbelltown in round 27, or we may not even have a Spoon Bowl. The Tigers are super hot right now, but let's go the Dragons here, 1-12. to 12. 5.30 Saturday at Suncorp, the Dolphins take on the Broncos. Now, the Broncos have won all three of their matchups against the Dolphins, so they'll be licking their lips at their chances to make the eight on the back of a possible win here against the Dolphins, who are also in contention for that final spot in the eight. There are five teams vying for that eighth position, and these two teams, none gets bigger than this week. Whoever loses is definitely out for the finals race, and it will be curtains for their season. So a lot on the line here. I feel like the Dolphins have shown that fighting spirit this year and have really pushed teams right to the 80th minute. But I'm telling you, we have not seen it for, I reckon, two months. The Dolphins have been terrible, especially in their last 11 games. They've only won three out of their last 11 games. They're just gassed right now. They look like they haven't really got much in the tank. And for the Broncos, they have injuries to worry about. We don't know if Reese Walsh is going to suit up for this game. Don't know about Payne Haas. Is his foot going to be right? Ezra Mann, definitely out for this one. And you've got to say they weren't absolutely convincing against Parramatta. I know Kevy came out and said, oh, don't worry. We'll make the finals. We will be there. Mate, like, you gave up a 16-point lead to the 16th best team in the competition. Yeah, you beat them, but come on, mate. I actually feel like the Dolphins get one back here on the Broncos. I know they've not beaten them in their tenure, but I just feel like that fighting spirit has got to come out at some point. They will be without Cody Nikarima, and they will be without Jesse Bromish, who got injured in last week's games. But I just feel like there's something there for the Dolphins this week. Don't. Get me wrong, the form guide doesn't suggest that. But I feel like the Dolphins can get a win here. That's why they're going to be my Hills Cricket Academy lock of the week. Guys, let's get on the Dolphins this week and let's end the Broncos' chances of making the finals this year. Come on, Dolphins. Get it home 1-12. to Saturday night, the Sharks take on the Warriors at Points Bet Stadium in the Sutherland Shire and it will be the last game in Sean Johnson's career. 
fittingly enough that he will play against the only other team that he has played for in the competition. I reckon they should play for the Sean Johnson Cup or something like that, the Warriors and the Sharks. But I feel like this is a tough place for the Warriors to go to, despite all the emotions of last week as well. Lot was riding high, and the Dogs withstood them, and they managed to come back and win that game. And going to the Sutherland Shire for games hasn't really been a theme of the Warriors players' dreams of the past. They've only won one game there since 2015. That was obviously last season. For the Sharks, I really didn't think that they'd get the win against the Dragons down at Win Stadium, but they have a great record over the Dragons. They've won nine now in a row against them and for the Sharks I really feel like they are finding some of their earlier season form and it's really good timing for them they're playing the ball so quickly that forward pack is working well in rotation yes I would say it doesn't have many superstars in it in terms of the middle forwards they've got a nice um you know rotation of above average front rowers but none of them really seem to be that you know, dominant front rower. And when AFB gets there next year, it'll be very interesting to see who sticks around, who's going to be on the bench. But for this game, I'm going to back them in. I think the Sharks, once again, get a tight win over the Warriors. And unfortunately for Sean Johnson, he won't be the winner of the inaugural Sean Johnson Cup. Um, I do feel like he will end his season with another loss. And Yes, they do have the bye next week, the Warriors. So this will be the last time you see Sean Johnson kids. So make sure that you get down to Points Bet Stadium. I'd love to be out there, but unfortunately I'm busy on Saturday night. Uh, so we'll see if they can pick up a victory, but got to go with the Sharkies here, 1-12. to Sunday starts with the Knights taking on the Titans at McDonald Jones Stadium. Now the Knights got a win over the Titans earlier this year at Seabus Super Stadium, but prior to that, 12 games in a row in this fixture went to the home team and no doubt the Knights will be needing a win this week in order to stay in touch with their top eight dreams. I'm just not sure if they're going to get there in the end, but it will be a good effort nonetheless. The Titans, one of the biggest drop-offs in form that we've seen this year. They were playing some pretty good football up until about a month ago and are starting to experiment with a few things that I'm not exactly sure why they're doing it. They switched sides with Bo Furmore and Fafida on the week. Again, Fafita got absolutely monstered and outplayed by Angus Crichton. So man, it was just a bit ridiculous from a Titans point of view. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. They seem to not have much idea when they get into the red zone, but they didn't have many opportunities on the weekend as the Roosters didn't give them to them. Khan Pereira is outstanding, by the way. Uh, scoring a hat-trick in a losing team that only scored 22 points is just ridiculous. Um, and no doubt that kid has come along in leaps and bounds and leads the NRL in the try-scoring department this year as well, especially for a team that is well outside the top eight. That is unbelievable. For the Knights, they're tough for me to speak on, as everyone knows on this channel. I'm not the biggest fan of the Knights. I feel like they play a very boring football, but to be fair, they showed some really good attacking plays on the weekend. I thought Ponga finally found a vein of you know, good momentum coming out of his own end and then also made a couple of really nice breaks or half breaks as well that really got the Knights on the front foot. No doubt they will be needing that a lot this week. They should get Bradman Best as well back for this game. No doubt they'll probably want him to be pushing him back considering they're in contention for the finals. I'm not so sure it's the right decision, but he probably will come back and fortify that left side. Man, if the Knights can do what they did last week to the Rabbitohs, I feel like they get a pretty easy win here, but I feel like I'm going to stick to it being 1-12 to for the Knights. And this Titan side just really need to get it together at the moment, but I don't see it happening this week. Knights, 1-12. to the final game of round 26 takes place at Allianz Stadium this week where the Roosters will be taking on the Raiders. Now, the Raiders come into this on the back of some confidence, having gotten a win against the Panthers last week. And the Roosters, well, they just dominated the Titans up at Seabus Super Stadium and have also beaten the Raiders six out of the last 10 times they've played against each other. I feel like the Roosters, though, there's a little bit of a cause for concern there. They've played 11 games against current top eight sides this year, and they've only won four matches against those teams. They haven't beaten any of the top four teams either. So you've got to say that they would be wanting to maybe play one of those teams in the lead up to the finals rather than get there not having any good fortune against them and trying to produce it in the finals. I feel like when they play those teams that don't allow them to play the way that they want to play, which is spread the ball, 
Uh, we'll also work our giant middle forwards down the middle and we'll get Tedesco and Sam Walker to work off the back of that to unlock Joey Manu, Suali'i, Dom Young, Daniel Tupo and the like. I just really feel like the dogs, the Panthers and the Storm would really give them some trouble considering those teams are so solid defensively and have great line speed. They really shut down your time with the ball. And when that happens to the Roosters, they tend to go back to their shell a little bit and they end up playing a kind of game plan that they aren't set up to do. So I think there's a little bit of a cause of concern there. Unfortunately for the Raiders, I don't really see them getting a win in this one. Their form away from GIO Stadium hasn't been great this year. They've only won three games out of nine. So that's not, not a great hit rate away from home. So I feel like the Roosters should get a win at 13 plus to cap us out for round 26. So that's it for my tips for round 26, guys. What do you think about them? Let me know down in the comments section below. Please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.